Welcome to this GIFWorks video. My name is Jonathan Lehman and this is the third video in a seven part video series on GIFWorks events. GIFWorks events is an optional add-in that can be purchased and it works with any of the versions of the GIFWorks fundraising software from GIFWorks 2008 and later. In the previous videos as part of this video series, I've already given a quick fast paced overview of the entire process to set up an event and I've demonstrated a lot of the things that you can define about an event within GIFWorks events. In the previous video, I demonstrated how once you set up the basic information for an event, one of the first things you will want to do is start to design and add the activities for an event. An activity is something that can, it's a ticketable item, something that can be ordered or reserved, something that you want to track for that event. In this particular video, we're going to review the participant list, what a participant list is, how you add donors to the participant list, and how you can use it to uh, send targeted mailings to invite people to your event. And we'll also review how you can track event tasks, your to-do list, keeping track of the things that need to get done. So let's begin by signing into GIFWorks. If you've installed the GIFWorks events add-in, you'll have an additional option on your, to on your toolbar called events. If I click on that, I go to manage events. Here we can see the different events. Here's our 2009 winter banquet that we've been working on. I can either click on this and click view or double click. I'll double click it to view. It brings us up to our summary page. You can see a lot of the information we've set up. Here's the activities we set up in the in the previous video. You can see it's we're starting to build our event. You can see that we don't have a we don't really have anything on actual income or actual expenses at this point, but we do have the goal amount that we put in. We also have this potential income, which is based on our activities. So based on the, the price and the number available for all activities, it adds those all up and, and it gives our potential income. You can see we're starting to build our graph over here. We have uh, this the, this yellow color is this this event compared to all the other events, and you can see how it's comparing the income goal and the potential income, which we have. We at this point we don't have any actual income yet. And we'll be we'll continue to look at this as we go through this series to see how this information will be built as we continue to build add information to our event. So the next thing we want to probably focus on is participants. What is a participant list? What or what what do we consider a participant? Well, that's sort of a generic name for anybody that we want to invite to our event, to participate in some way with our event. Not necessarily attending an event, it might be somebody we want to we want to invite to sponsor something at our event. So is anybody we want to be involved with our event in some way. I have a summary up here which shows that there's no participants currently and I also have this the section down here where the list will be and I have the option to add participants. If I click add participants, we can see that I can, I can add participants based on a smart list or a mailing list. So how might I how might I want to target individuals to invite in, in to invite donors to this event. Well, who might who might want I want to target to attend this event? I might want to target my event participants based on their previous event participation, or I might want to target it based on their giving levels. Let's create a smart list. So I'm going to create a donor smart list. And I'm saying who the pe persons I might want to invite to attend this event would be people that have donated any money to my organization, given any gifts to my organization, and maybe those that have attended previous events. So first I'll go into donation history and say total donations greater than zero. So we have 64 donors there, but I'm also going to add another criteria set. And I'm going to say all those that have attended an event in the past. So you can see now I have a list of 94 donors that are people I want to uh, invite to attend my banquet. So I'll say banquet invitees 2009 and I'll save that list. I also might want to create a smart list for donors that I want to target to sponsor this event. And I might base that on donors that are given larger gifts. So I'm going to say any donors that have contributed over $5,000 to my organization I have two there, but I also want to see anybody that's anybody that's sponsored an event in the past. So I can again, based on my activity that I have in within GiftWorks events, I can say anyone that's sponsored an event in the past, and it adds five more donors. So I now have seven donors that I can target based on giving larger gifts to my organization or sponsoring events in the past, and I can target them for this event. And I'll just call this banquet sponsors 2009. These are potential sponsors. We'll just make that name short though. So let me go back to events and I'll double click on my winter banquet and I'll go to the participant list and I'll click on add participants again. And I'm going to pick my my list banquet invitees 2009. 
I come to a dialogue page where it asks me for the invitation group. What is an invitation group? Invitation group is a lot like groups within GIFWorks, but the invitation groups are designed to work within GIFWorks events. You can you can define your invi your invitation groups within the settings area, and these are invitation groups that will be available for any one of your events. But a donor is part of an invitation group to assigned to a particular invitation group for a particular event. So although I have this set of invitation groups, as a donor, I, if I, I may be on a participant list in more than one event, I could be in a different invitation group for different events. So m for one event, I may be targeted as a sponsor. Another, another event, I might be targeted as an attendee. And the invitation groups are primarily a way of segregating your participant list to do targeted mailings for, for inviting them. That's the name invitation groups. So in this case, this is the smart list of my potential attendees. So I'm going to add them to the attendees invitation group because these are one the persons, the donors I'm going to want to target to attend my event. So I click Next. It confirms that I'm going to add 94 attendees. I click Finish. And it adds them to my list. And it adds 94 attendees. You can see it updated the summer here. It adds them with a status of invited and attended no. Let me edit one so I can show you the various statuses. By default, when we add participants to, an to a participant list, we add them as invited. Why do we do that? Our assumption is that when you add participants to a participant list, that you're going to use them, you're, you're going to in some way invite them to your event. So they default with that status. As we go through the showing you more information in further videos, you'll, they can go through a process where they can, they can accept your invitation. You can mark that they've declined it. And we'll review not invited and, and in future videos. You can also later mark whether they've actually attended your event. And here's the invitation groups. But I also want to add some some participant lists, uh, some participants for uh, those that I want to target to sponsor my event. So I can click on Add Participants. I could either add a single participant if I know of an individual I want to add. We're not going to do that in this case. I can search for a donor there and add one. In this case, I want to add my banquet sponsors, potential banquet sponsors. So I'm going to add them to the sponsors invitation group and click Next. I confirm that there's seven, and you see that it it added. I don't have any more additional participants, so all the participants that were in my sponsor group are already participants as a potential attendees. So when it did that, it actually left the attendee group in there and also in, in added them to the sponsor invitation group. If I, if I sort by that column, you'll see that my seven spo potential sponsors are also were targeted to, be to attend the event. That may not always be the case. That's how it worked out in this case. Now I can use this to target mailing. So if I click on Send Mail for this event, I have various options about how I can target. I can send mail to all my event participants to selected participant statuses, whether they've been invited or not. In this case, I'm going to target them. I have individual letters based on in the invitation group. So I'm going to I'm going to target a mailing based on the attendees invitation group. Brings up a donor mailing. Click next. There's my 94 participants, and I have a letter here that's a general wel welcome letter or a, an invitation letter. So if I preview this, it says you're cordially invited to attend our 2009 winter banquet. I'm not going to actually finish that mail in the, in the interest of time, but I could also do the same thing. I could target a mailing for my sponsors, so I have a different letter for my sponsors. I click Next. There's my seven potential sponsors. I have a sponsorship letter, and there and preview that. It's basically thanking them for the generous support of our organization in the past, inviting them to sponsor a table at our banquet. So you can see I can use use those invitation groups to target mailings to participants for our event. So now we have the participants, uh, our participant list, and we'll go into more detail on, th on how you manage that participant list as you as you go through your event. I also want to review tasks, our tracking event tasks. We have a tab over here called tasks. This is your to-do list, keeping track of things that need to get done. So at this point, you might want to, as you're defining your event, you might want to start to think of the tasks that you want to get done and make sure that they get assigned to somebody so that they, so that they get taken care of. Uh, these tasks are assigned for a specific event and they can only be viewed within an event. They're not included on the view and manage tasks or the task widget at this point. So these are tasks that you're adding for your particular event. So for instance, I might want to add a task, uh, that I, something I want to follow up on, and I want to uh, order, the, order the tickets for the event, and maybe I need to do that. I want to take care of that tomorrow. I can put a time in. I could assign that to somebody. I'm going to assign that to Rachel. And I click Save. I could I could uh, add another task. I could say I want to make a phone call. I want to call in the final count. I 
And I want to call in that final count uh, about a week before the event and I want to assign that to Sarah. So these are these are tasks that I'm setting up that I want to make sure get accomplished. I can go in and I could later edit these tasks. I could change the description. I could change the date. I can mark them as completed once they get once they're completed. So once that's done, I could I could mark them as completed. So just a, a way of managing the t the many tasks that need to that need to be taken care of uh, when you're when you're hosting an event for your organization. So we've covered in this video about how you want to start to build your participant list and start to invite people to your event, either to attend it or to sponsor it. And we've also reviewed how you can start to set up your task list to manage the many tasks that need to get to be accomplished to, to hold your event and how you can manage that, see which ones are completed, and assign people to those tasks. We hope this video has been helpful and encourage you to watch the rest in this video series. Thank you.